if you have ever run a marathon, you have your cardiopulmonary system to thank for the delivery of oxygen to all your muscle cells. Even if you aren't a super athlete, you can still thank your cardiopulmonary system for keeping you alive. This system ensures all cells in your body get the oxygen they need to carry out essential cellular processes, as well as remove cellular waste such as carbon dioxide. The cardiopulmonary system consists of two interdependent body systems, the cardiovascular and the respiratory systems. The cardiovascular system is a body system consisting of the heart, blood vessels and blood. One of the functions of the cardiovascular system is to transport nutrients, waste and gases such as oxygen. A second function carried out by the white blood cells in the bloodstream is to help defend against invasion of pathogens. The main organ of the cardiovascular system is the heart, a muscular organ which in humans is about the size of a fist. Even though the structure varies within organisms, in the vertebrate heart, the atrium is the chamber that receives blood from the body and the ventricle is the chamber that pumps blood away from the heart. The number of atria and ventricles varies between organisms. So for example, the fish heart has a single atrium and ventricle, whereas the human heart has two atria and two ventricles. A system of blood vessels is responsible for taking blood to and from the heart. There are three major types of blood vessels. These are the arteries, veins, and capillaries. It's important to keep in mind that blood vessel type is distinguished by the direction of blood flow, not whether the blood in them carries oxygen or not. Arteries carry blood away from the heart to the lungs or other body tissues under high pressure. Capillaries are thin-walled blood vessels that surround tissues. They are the site of nutrient and gas exchange. As blood flows out of the capillaries, it enters venules, which in turn converge to form veins that return blood to the heart, completing the circuit. Mammalian blood circulation has two main circuits, the pulmonary circuit that carries blood away from the heart to the lungs, and the systemic circuit, which carries blood from the heart to the rest of the body. In mammals, low oxygen blood returning from the body collects in the vena cavi and enters the right atrium of the heart. A contraction of the heart pushes the blood into the lower chamber, the right ventricle. The next contraction pushes the blood into the pulmonary arteries, which carries the blood to the lungs. As blood flows through the capillaries in the lungs, carbon dioxide diffuses out of the blood and oxygen diffuses into the blood the newly oxygenated blood travels back to the heart through the pulmonary veins. Blood from pulmonary veins re-enters the heart in the left atrium. A contraction of the heart pushes the blood into the left ventricle. The next contraction pushes the blood out of the heart through the aorta, the largest blood vessel in the body. The aorta branches into many arteries that transport blood to the rest of the body. The arteries branch further to form arterioles, then further into capillaries. Within the tissues and organs, capillaries are the site of gas exchange, with oxygen entering the cells and carbon dioxide entering the blood. Blood with low oxygen levels returns through veins to the vena cavi and back to the right atrium of the heart. Note that even though higher order animals, such as mammals and birds, have two circuits, as we just described, this is not true for all animals. Fish, for example, have a single circuit that pumps blood from the gill capillaries to the systemic capillaries. Now that we have looked at the circulatory system, it's time to look at the respiratory system. Respiratory structures in organisms vary, but all structures have similar functions to facilitate the exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide between cells and the environment. In order to maximize gas exchange, respiratory structures tend to have a large surface area facilitated by blood flowing close to these surfaces. Breathing in mammals is the process of moving air between the environment and the lungs. Inhaling causes a contraction of the diaphragm, a muscle beneath the lungs. The movement of the diaphragm is downward towards the abdomen, increasing the volume of space in the chest and lungs and decreasing the pressure within the lungs. Air moves into the lungs to equalize this pressure. 
during exhalation, the diaphragm relaxes and moves upward toward the lungs. Relaxing the diaphragm decreases the volume in the chest cavity and increases the pressure in the lungs. Air moves out of the lungs to equalize the pressure. Typically, air enters through the nostrils, where it is moistened, warmed and filtered by hair-like structures called cilia, which line the trachea, often referred to as the windpipe. The trachea is also lined with mucus, which traps particles in the air. Cilia then moves the mucus with trapped particles away from the lungs toward the throat. The trachea branches into two bronchi, each leading to a separate lung. The bronchi branch further into smaller tubes called bronchioles. At the end of each bronchiole is a cluster of alveoli. Alveoli are surrounded by a web of capillaries and oxygen diffuses down its concentration gradient from each alveolus into the blood and back to the heart, where it is pumped to the rest of the body. Carbon dioxide also diffuses from an area of high to low concentration, so from the blood into the alveoli, where it's subsequently expelled into the environment during exhalation. Not all organisms accomplish gas exchange in the same manner as mammals. For example, fish have specific structures, the gills, that remove oxygen from water. Other organisms have different structures or processes to exchange gases based on the body construction or environment.